As my kids like to say, it's buck freezing cold outside right now. The wind's howling and it's been raining for the past two or three days. I'm cooped up, can't get outside to play, and I'm bored to death. And I've been wondering what can I do down in my basement and workshop to, to entertain myself. I gave it some thought. I decided I was gonna do something that I haven't done in really a very long time. I decided I was gonna build a fire piston. Wanna watch? All right, let's talk about the parts we're gonna to need to build our fire piston. The first thing I'm gonna need is a length of half inch wooden dowel rod. Uh, this is a scrap piece left over from some other long ago project. This, uh, this bit of dowel rod happens to be made of oak, but any wood species will do. I, I see uh, poplar dowel rods for sale cheap at most hardware stores on a regular basis. Next thing I'm gonna need is a uh, length of copper tubing. This is half inch copper tubing. I cut this from a, from a scrap piece that I had uh, uh, left over from another project as well. I've already cut it to proper length. It's five inches long. That's how long I need. And I've got a half inch copper end cap that I'm gonna solder on in just a few minutes. Um, I cut the copper tubing using my tubing cutter. Maybe you have one of those in your toolbox. And I deburred the inside of the copper tube after I got done cutting it using this inexpensive, almost throwaway pocket knife that I keep in my tool chest just for this purpose. Don't ruin a good knife deburring your copper, folks. Next thing I'm gonna need is some uh, number eight O-rings. These are made by Danco. Uh, number eight O-rings have an outside diameter of nine sixteenths of an inch and an inside diameter of three eighths of an inch. This package of 10, I think cost me maybe $2.50 or so at a local hardware store. And last thing I'm gonna need are some wooden drawer pulls. I'm gonna attach one of these to the end of my piston a little bit later on. Uh, the manufacturer doesn't really matter, but these were made by Allen and Roth and they came in a package of two. I think I paid about $1.79 for the package of two. So that's it. That's all the parts we need to make our fire piston. We need a length of half inch dowel rod. We need five inches of uh, half inch copper tubing, half inch copper end cap, some number eight O-rings, and a couple of wooden drawer pulls. All right, folks, let's get to work. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on my cylinder. I'm gonna take some steel wool and I'm gonna polish up one end of my copper tube where I intend to solder on the uh, end cap. Just shine it up a bit, get rid of the tarnish so that the, uh, so that the solder will stick a little bit better. And I'm also going to take my steel wool and run it around the inside of the end cap and get rid of any tarnish that might be on the inside of it as well. Now I'm gonna take some tinning flux and with a Q-tip, I'm gonna get a little bit, get a little bit on my Q-tip and I'm gonna run that around the shined up part of my copper tube. This will also help the solder stick that much better and flow better. And I'm gonna run it around the inside of the end cap as well, just for good measure. Then we'll just stick it all together and it's ready to solder.
Truth be told, I'm a better fire maker than I am a plumber. This is definitely not my best soldering job. I took some steel wool and cleaned everything up and shined it as best I could. And I inspected the joint and it does indeed look like the uh, solder flowed uniformly around the inside of that end cap. And it does look like it's a nice airtight seal. That's what I was shooting for, so I think that's good enough. Let's move on and start working on the piston. It's time now to get started working on the piston. I've done some preliminary work already. First thing I did was I sanded the end of uh, what will become my piston. I sanded it flat. Uh, I got a little aggressive with it. It looks like it burnt uh, the wood just a teensy bit, but that's okay. If all goes well, it's going to get some uh, char dust on it before too long anyhow. I also uh, drilled a small recess where I'll put some char cloth a little bit later on. I did this freehand with just a, uh, I did it with a power drill, but I did it freehanded. I used a quarter inch drill bit and uh, I uh, drilled a slight little divot, maybe, maybe about an eighth of an inch deep, maybe just a teensy bit better. And I've also laid out a couple of uh, lines, uh, one quarter and one half inch away from the bottom of what, my, what will ultimately be my piston. I'm gonna start working in grooves where my uh, O-rings will sit. Uh, working in these grooves is gonna be the most time consuming and tedious part of this whole project. I've got to make sure that I get a really good airtight seal, but I don't want it to be so tight that the piston won't move. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by carving uh, with my pocket knife a little groove, and then I'm gonna start filing, and then I'm just gonna go very slowly. I'm gonna file a little bit and check for fit, file a little bit, check for fit, and uh, keep doing that until I get, get it just the way I want. That'll take a little while. All right, here goes. Well, I've been working on this piston for about 45 minutes or so. I think I'm just about done with it. Before I tell you anything else, maybe I'll just show you the tools I was using. I did the initial carving around the circumference of my uh, piston using just the small blade of my Swiss Army knife. And I was doing the filing with this little rat tail file. I measured it, it's about an eighth of an inch in diameter, or so maybe just a Maybe a shave smaller in diameter than that. But anyway, those are the two, two tools I was using, my Swiss Army knife blade and this little rat tail file. So this is, uh, these are the two grooves that I carved into the end of my piston. They seem to be fairly uniformly round. I just went slowly, file a little bit, check for fit, file a little bit, check for fit. You may notice that uh, this end of the piston now is a little bit shiny. As I was working on this second groove here, that little piece of wood in here, I don't know exactly where now because I fixed it, started cracking and, and, and breaking away. So what I did was I stopped and uh, I coated everything on the, the bottom end of the piston or what will be the bottom end of the piston. I coated it with super glue to harden it and hold everything together. And then once it dried, I did a little bit more filing. That seems to have done the trick. Again, it took me about 45 minutes to do all of my filing and fitting. I may need to do just a little bit more in a few minutes. Um, my O-ring is not yet lubricated, but you can see it's a, it's a fairly snug fit. I think it'll fit a little bit better once I put some lubricant on it. We'll do that in a few minutes. But anyway, about 45 minutes of patient work to work in those two grooves. Had to apply a little bit of super glue to hold the, the wood together and to harden it just a little bit. But I think we're getting close. Stay tuned for the rest. The next thing I need to do is cut my piston rod to the appropriate length. Here is my uh, one of the knobs that I bought. 
and I've drilled a half inch hole into it. Uh, I used a Forstner bit that allowed me to drill a flat bottom hole, but a, a twist drill bit would work just as fine. It's a half inch in diameter. Fits onto the uh, piston rod quite nicely. What I did was I made a little mark right there where the, the knob seats down onto the piston rod. And I'm gonna measure that in just a minute. And my cylinder comes down and I made a little mark right here. If you can see that one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure the depth of my piston and I'm gonna to add to that the depth of the hole that I drilled into the knob. I'm gonna add them together and I'm gonna cut my piston, piston uh, rod maybe one hand saw width shorter than that. And then I'm gonna glue on the knob to the end of the piston. I don't want the piston, when I plunge it into the cylinder, I don't want it to completely bottom out. If it bottoms out, when I put some uh, char cloth into this little divot, if I compress it and actually get it to ignite, if it bottoms out, it can put it out. So I'm gonna cut this piston rod just a maybe an eighth of an inch or less shorter than I need so I don't quite bottom out. Uh, we'll do all that off screen and I'll show you the results next. All right. Here is my near final product. I've cut my piston to length and I've glued on my knob. It's looking pretty good. It uh, will seat fully into the cylinder, but not quite bottom out, which is what I was looking for. So far, so good, I think. Before I do any final fitting and adjustment though, I'm going to apply a couple of coats of wipe-on polyurethane to this wooden piston. Uh, this is ultimately destined to be a, an outside toy, and I want to protect it against the weather just in case. So before I uh, start applying lubricant and gooping everything up um, and doing my final fitting, I'm just going to go ahead and protect this with some polyurethane. And uh, once we get done with that, let everything dry, we'll give it a test drive and keep our fingers crossed it that it works. Stay tuned. My brand new fire piston worked on the very first try ever. How about that? Let me pick that ember out. Pick that out so I can talk to you safely. Um, here's the final product after a couple of coats of uh, wipe-on polyurethane. I've installed the O-rings and lubricated them. Here, of course, is the cylinder. Nothing's changed about it. Strictly speaking, the 
O-rings should be lubricated with a non-petroleum product. Uh, silicone grease is what's usually recommended for lubricating O-rings. But my experience is that this stuff is just not very slippery. It doesn't work real well. It uh, results in a fair amount of friction between the O-rings and the inside of the cylinder. I don't like it. What I've used is some 3-in-1 oil. I've uh, put a fairly good coating of 3-in-1 oil on the O-rings, and I also uh, took a stick and a, and a, a bit of a, a paper towel, and I lubricated the inside of the, of the cylinder. Um, this does contain petroleum distillates, and over time, it will uh, degrade the rubber in the O-rings, and you'll have to replace them. I think what I'm gonna do is uh, be on the watch for some nitrile O-rings of the same size, and I'll probably replace my uh, rubber O-rings with some nitrile uh, O-rings that'll withstand the petroleum lubricants that I like to use. All right, folks, this worked on the very first ever try. I'm very happy. Uh, as soon as it warms up, <laughs> I'm gonna go outside and we'll use it to kindle a little fire. Wish me luck. Stay tuned. Well, it's a balmy 28 degrees outside this morning. Decide this is about as good as I'm gonna get. Let's give it a go. I've already put some uh, char cloth down in the divot of my piston. differences of opinion on this but I like to ignite a bigger piece of char cloth than what I can get out of the end of my fire piston just to give me a better chance of ignition There we go. My little uh, do-it-yourself fire piston works great. Ignited on the very first try, and I think I've gotten more than 20 ignitions in as many tries since I first showed you my first ignition. It was a fun little project for a cold winter week. Hope you'll give it a try. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.